praise the Lord, everybody. Right where you are, begin to open your mouth and give God some glory. Right in your home, right in your living room, right in your bedroom, right in your office, wherever you stand, begin to give God some glory because He is worthy and worthy of all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. This morning we welcome you to the Catholic at FBT. Won't you prepare to go with us in prayer? Brother Coach is coming to lead us before the throne of grace.
So there's a there's an old song that my grandmother used to sing, and I, you can just keep right there. I'm, I'm just gonna do it on top of that. And uh, he goes like this. <laughs> Don't look at me. I'm yours, Lord. Everything I've got, everything I am, everything I'm not. I'm yours, Lord. Try me now and see. See if I can be completely yours. I'm yours, Lord. Everything I've got, everything I am, everything I'm not, I'm yours, Lord. Try me now and see. See if I can be completely yours. I'm yours, Lord. Everything I've got. Everything I am, everything I'm not, I'm yours, Lord. Try me now and see, see if I can be completely yours. One more time. I'm yours. Come on, make that declaration. Everything I've got, everything I am, everything I'm not, I'm yours, Lord. Try me now and see, see if I can be completely yours. One more time. Say, I'm yours, Lord. I'm yours, Lord. Everything I've got, everything I am, everything I'm not, I'm yours, Lord. Try me now and see. See if I can be. Say that I'm yours, Lord. Everything. I'm yours, I'm yours. 
Father, we bless you. You're worthy of all things and all praise. I pray right now, Lord, that as we enter into your gates with thanksgiving and enter into your courts with praise, that, Lord, you will find our worship acceptable, that it be palatable to your template, to your, to your, to, to your ears, Lord, that you will receive it, that, Lord, you delight in it. I pray that, Lord, your word says that you desire to inhabit or to live in the praise of your people. Help us to make your praise big enough Make it great enough so that you can be comfortable in it, God. We don't want you to be cramped up. We want you to feel comfortable. We want you to stretch out and make yourself at home in our worship, in our praise, Lord. That in our interaction with you, that it might produce for you kingdom results. I pray even right now, Holy Spirit, that you set the atmosphere, charge it so that we might be able to hear the fullness of what the Father wants to do in our lives. I thank you, Lord, for allowing us to hear your voice clearly and the voice of the stranger we will not follow. I thank you, Lord, that you do all things well so that we're growing in how to do things better. You do all things well so we're growing in learning how to do things better. I pray even now, Lord, that you'll allow us to learn how to hear your voice and be obedient to each step, not skipping steps. Being in sync with what you want to do in this season, we surrender to you, Lord. We surrender our hearts, our minds, our time, our gifts, our talent, so that you might be able to get kingdom performance or kingdom uh, production out of us. And I don't mean putting on a production or performance. What I mean is that, Lord, we operate in a capacity that is at a kingdom standard. That we operate in a capacity that is at a kingdom standard. Not as the world desires, not as the world sees, and definitely not as our flesh determines, but what you desire, and we'll be careful to give you the praise, Lord, and the honor and the glory in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Turn me really quickly to... Uh, to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians 5. 2 Corinthians 5. We're going to start at verse... Uh, let's start at verse 17. We're going to read 17 to 21. I'm going to go back and I'm going to go to verse 10. But I want you to read with me verses 17 through 21. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 through 21. And to all of you who are joining with us, thank you so much for being with us. You could be anywhere else. I appreciate the fact that you are pressing uh, and that you're choosing to be intentional and stay connected. Uh, I want you to please don't forget uh, that, that, there are, uh, that there are there is a great uh, number of people who would love to be able to do what you're doing right now and who are not able to who would love to be able to participate in any form, in any way. So I'm encouraging you, take advantage of the time that you have right now. Let's engage in the presence of the Lord. Let's uh, make the most of these moments and make sure that we share what we can from these moments with others. Amen. Second Corinthians 5, you got it? Starting in verse 17, it says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new and all things are of God who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself not imputing their trespasses unto them and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then we hear, now then we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Amen. Whew. Oh boy. Help me, Holy Spirit. So, uh, <clears throat> let, I, 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 tell somebody, let's get together. 
uh, you know, I guess I, I, that'll be that probably be a, as best as I can for a title. Let's get together. Uh, I want to uh, I want to begin. I want to start uh, with this point uh, that we remember. First of all, the idea that the Lord is, was, and forever will be. Yesterday, today, and forever, he is consistent in all his ways, and his will and his desire is so that the will of God might be performed. And, and if you don't know what the will of God is, if you go over to Ephesians chapter 1, the Ephesians 1, he, he, the Lord gives us a glimpse of what his, his ultimate will is. It is the will of the Father to unite all things together in heaven, both in heaven and in earth, together unto his dear Son. That is his absolute will. It is his desire. And here's what I love. The things that he's called for us to do... As long as they are, as long as we make sure that we are compliant to his will, what we will do is we will help to bring to pass or we will bring in order, we will bring to fruition what his desire and his will is. In other words, we won't miss what his desire is for choosing after what we think he wants. He's given us a clear definition of what he wants. Now, here's the thing. What he does not want, <clears throat> what he does not want. I say this all the time is he does not want he's not interested in in religion. He is interested in relationship or else he would not continue to say things like this all through the scripture. He would not have established what we see in Genesis chapter one when he establishes the creation and he makes man in his image and in his likeness and then dwells with man in the garden. Allowing him to name the items in the garden, allowing him to, 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 to talk and to dialogue. It, 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 I love the, the, the power that he brings in the idea that the fellowship that he requires with man is so, uh, is so important. It's so imperative. Not only did he make us in his image, but when you read Genesis, uh, right in chapter 2, uh, he says specifically, it's not good for man to be alone. And then for a few more verses, he dwells with man before he makes a solution for Man being alone. Now watch this. It wasn't that man was lonely. He wanted to make sure that man had the companion that was necessary to fulfill his will. When we look at how he delivers Israel from Egypt, when we look at uh, all the things that he does in order, uh, when you look at when he uh, wipes out uh, mankind for sin, but then still chooses Noah and his family in Genesis chapter, uh, I believe it's chapter 9, when you see that, uh, when you look at how he chooses this family to be uh, saved or to be hidden in this ark. Uh, I love the fact that his desire has always been the nucleus behind the family or the fellowship of the family. And I love how he calls us sons and daughters that we become the family of God. It is his desire again always to create this endearing close relationship that, that, that requires that requires us to understand our identity and who he is and what he speaks over us. Having said that now there are, there are four things that are specifically important when we talk about the mission or the work or the will of God. The first one is the fact that we have to understand who he is or the person of God. When we understand who he is or the person of God, we understand that the, 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 the power that he's given us or that the power that we, that we grab a hold of or that we get the opportunity to have access to is defined in who he is. Watch this. Not what he does, who he is. Saving is what he does, but if all we do is define about what he does, we never get the opportunity to actualize or to grow in the power of the relationship of who he is so that when he calls us sons and daughters, when he calls us heirs and joint heirs, that we understand that we're not heirs to salvation just only, but that we are heirs to the kingdom of heaven. Dramatic pause waiting for marination. Is that, is that, okay, we got that. All right, so, so again, if, if, if all we do is we focus on the fact that he is the Savior, people are always going to need saving. But if we don't establish and determine and speak to people about the fact that he is Lord and King, when he speaks... Matthew chapter 4 for the first time coming out of the uh, coming out of the wilderness after fasting 40 days and 40 nights and he comes out the very first thing that he preaches and he says is repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. In other words, he determines or he defines the lordship of God. He again defines the, 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 the kingdom of God and he establishes that he does not say I came to save y'all. You, you, you do remember that, right? He, he, he does not say because the first words he preaches in Matthew chapter 4 when he comes out, when he begins his ministry, is not, hey, I came down here to save y'all. The first thing he came, he said, the first thing he said was repent for what? Repent for what? Okay, all right. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. 
In other words, he is again defining his person and here's where we have to identify who he is. So there are four things we have to remember about him before we get to the next part, before we get to, to 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 5. The four things we have to determine. The first thing is the person of who God is. In other words, his lordship, his person. Secondly, we have to establish is the place. Where does he reign as Lord? Well, let's again, what does he say? Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. In other words, he represents or he's an ambassador of the kingdom. Kingdom is a two part word. We always talk about that, right? Two part word. What does it mean? King and what? Dom, right? So king is a lord or one who rules with, with ultimate authority and dom, which is short for dominion. It is the area in which he rules and reigns, right? So when we put those together, we're talking about the Lord who operates in his, uh, in his area of, of, of expertise or of, uh, or, or of lordship, and then the area that he operates in. So the one who rules and the area he operates in together makes the kingdom. All right. So when we talk about the place, here's the thing. We're not talking about specifically just being seated in the heavenly places with Christ Jesus. It's understanding that where the Lord rules then becomes a part of the kingdom, right? That where he rules, because if we define his person and then we enthrone him or we put him in place, then he gets to rule over this area also. Here's how we grow the kingdom of God. When he reigns over us and then the kingdom of me, population three, me, myself and I no longer exist. And now I'm submitted to the king of kings and the Lord of lords that I submit my authority to him. So the first thing again is what? The person of him. The second thing, the person which is his lordship. The person, the second thing is the place, which is his kingdom. The third thing is his power. The power that he operates in or his authority. Watch this. A lot of people love the idea of authority or love the idea of being able to wield authority or having authority or, or being in charge. Uh, I think the, 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 the funniest thing is the one thing that we are always wanting to be in charge of is the one thing that we probably should never put our hands on. That's, that's us. We're always trying to run us, always trying to, trying to program our lives. We're always trying to be in control of what we're going through, what we're doing. And the very thing that we always try to control should be the very one thing that we should probably put our, take our hands off of so that he might be able to reign over us and lead and guide us unto all truth. Here's the thing about authority or the power of God. The authority is only given to those who are under or who are subject to the Lord. Again, authority can only be extended to an ambassador who is subject to its king, right? The last part that we have to uh, remember is, number, is the fourth one is the seat. See, which is, uh, of the, sorry, the culture. The culture represents uh, his language, his mannerisms, his conversation, his rules, his ways. If we can't embody or receive or, or, or reproduce the culture of heaven, then how can we be proper ambassadors of his lordship? So, so now, now let's look at this again. The things that we absolutely have to, have to uh, define or that we have to remember is that uh, the person, the place, the power, and the culture. Let's say that again. The person, the place, the power, and the culture. When we talk about the Lord, when we talk about uh, when we talk about uh, 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 when we talk about the kingdom of God, and, and again, that that is the gospel. The gospel requires all four of those things to be spoken or to be defined in context. Because if we don't talk about the person or the lordship of Christ, we don't talk about his uh, the place that, that he reigns. Watch this, because he reigns in heaven, but he doesn't reign here until his person is, is enthroned here. No, until his person is enthroned here. Right. Then what's the next one? Once he's enthroned, then he can operate in what? We can operate in, in the power of God. Right. Remember, after Jesus preaches, after he goes to the cross, Acts chapter one, he says, wait right here. That the Holy Spirit might come and that he might dwell with all of you and that you might be endued with what? With power. The power only comes after they define who he was and they allowed his kingdom to reign in their life. There's a process in the way this happens. Power, 
I'm sorry, person, place, power, and then the last part is the what? The culture. Watch this. The culture is us, again, defining who he is based on what he says, how he operates, his rules, his mannerisms, his conversation, that the things that he said that we should be doing. Here is why the word Christian means anointed like him. That the, the grace that he operated in is the very thing that we should be continuing or reproducing so that others can fall in love with him and not fall in love with position or not fall in love with power or not fall in love with place. See, here's the problem. See, people fall in love with the power, so they chase after position and the authority of the power. There's some people fall in love with the person, so all they want, oh, I just want Jesus and Jesus alone. Okay, but you can't have him on your terms. You have to have him in the fullness of his glory. You, 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 you can't say, oh, I, I just, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a part of the kingdom, I'm a kingdom ambassador. All right, well, you can't be a kingdom ambassador still reigning as king in your own life doing what you want to do. It requires all four portions to be able to be properly defined when we share the gospel so that when we preach and we share and we declare and we model it, that people can see the person of Christ operating in our life, the place which was the kingdom of God clearly represented or being enthroned in our hearts, that the power operates in our life because we are that we reproduce what he's doing. Then the last part being what? His culture, that the, his ways and his actions and his, and his conversations, even our countenance should be able to represent him. How, how many know that, that your face says a whole lot more than your mouth does? I am not going to look in the camera right now because I know that a few of y'all feel what I just said and I just hit you in the mouth. That's all right because you know it's the truth. Your face sometimes speaks louder than your words. How many times have you been in a situation and uh, you, you, didn't, you, you couldn't even say nothing but you were just like, My, my wife has this thing with blinking sometimes, you know, and, and she don't do it as much as she used to, but, but, but like when the blinking happens, I imagine that the blinks are, is, is like two little mouths saying all the stuff that her mouth want to say, but it won't say. Like, I know you just didn't. I realize that, that our face sometimes or our countenance, sometimes it misrepresents who the Lord is. And so watch this. In every area of our life, we have to represent him well. Now, now, now I said all that all of that to now lay a, a precedence for 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Whew. Paul's writing to the church of Corinth and he's speaking to them and, and while he's, he's preaching to them, he's sharing this, this is his second letter to the church of Corinth and, and, and he's defining it or he's encouraging them about having a confident or empowered ministry and as they're operating in, in this empowered ministry, <clears throat> He, he says some, some, key important, uh, some key important verses that we often, uh, we often quote and we often say, he tells us to, that we, for we walk by faith and not by sight. We are confident, I say, willing rather to be absent from the body and uh, to be present with the Lord. He's defining on what his position is on how he'd like to be able to be with the Lord. I love that uh, starting off at verse 10, he says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God. And I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. In other words, he's saying, listen, I'm praying that, that listen, we all got to stand before the Lord for what we do as we, uh, as we call ourselves declaring or representing him. But watch this. We're going to have to answer to him at some point for everything that we do and that we say. Here's the thing that I'm hoping that, that what you see in my life or what you see manifest in me, not, that it not only heralds God, but that it also helps you to, 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 to remember what your assignment is. That when you look at me, that I should spark in you uh, that, that same kind of, or that consistent response to the words of the kingdom of God. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. Understand that the, the, the Lord, ain't, he ain't playing. Uh, <laughs> sometimes I have to remind my kids that they mama crazy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, stop. What are you doing? Go to bed. Your mama really is still crazy. Jesus loves her and he uses her in mighty ways. But don't get wrong. You know, I, now, now, 
<laughs> there's this rule at our house where the kids got to turn the phones in at night at 12 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 1159 for safety, 1159. Because when 12 hit, any minute after 12 where the phone ain't turned in, it's a whole day without a phone. Well, you should see them. They be running up there like 1142. <laughs> just plugging it in, charging it up there. Just, just, just turning it in. When the cousins come over, same thing. Oh, oh, yeah, my bad. There you, here you go. Because I, I realize that there, there's a precedence. Watch this. And it's not so much that they're afraid of her, but they understand that she means business. Man, I, I wish that people would realize that God means business and he ain't playing with us. He's trying his best to get our attention. And people keep thinking, oh, well, you know, Lord, I thank you for mercy. I, well, I thank you, Lord, for mercy. Yes, he, he extends mercy. He delights in showing mercy. And yet he still ain't playing. He, he, he trying to get our, and I love that, that his mercy is also tempered with patience. Because I'm trying to give you time to get this together. I, 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 I listen to, uh, to, to sometimes when, uh, <laughs> when my wife, uh, you know, when she threatened my kids. Because, uh, you know, she might talk to them. She, she'll talk to them. She'll talk to them. And then when she starts getting quiet, that's when people really start getting scared. Because when she stops talking, that means something's going to happen. When she stops talking, you, you, what you, what you want to do is you want her to keep talking, you know. With that, that's what you, so they, 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 they be trying to you know, get it. But, but as soon as she's like, mm, come here, come here. Let me, let me. <laughs> I can't, can't imagine how many times you'll see her watch her call Zoe. She'll be like, come here, Zoe. Be like, eyes big. No, come here. I need you to, I need you to hear this real good. Like, and she start talking quiet. When she start getting quiet, that's when, it, it, that's when it's almost, because it's not so much that, that she wants to, to be, not so much that she wants to say it quietly. It's more so that she wants you to feel her breath while she's speaking to you. She, she said that. She, come, come feel my breath while I'm talking to you. She goes, because obviously my words didn't mean nothing. So let my breath touch it. Because if my breath touch it, maybe that'll get you right before my hands touch you. I love the fact that the Lord is breathing on us right now. But y'all are not letting... My God, y'all ain't listening to him real quiet because the scripture says that it's not in the loud rumbling. It's not in the earthquake. It's not in the whirlwind. It's in the still small voice where the Lord's trying to get your attention. He's saying, come here, come here. I'm trying to get, let, let my breath hit you real quick. He ain't playing. Verse 12, he says, for we commend not ourselves again unto you, but to give you occasion to glory on our behalf that you may have somewhat to answer them which glory in appearance and not in heart. In other words, he's sharing to them, listen, uh, we're not sharing with you our testimony, our experience, so that you know, we can be commended by you to get no, no pat on the back. We're trying to help you so that you can be able to perfect your walk. So that you won't miss what the Lord is saying right now in this season. And, and I think that sometimes uh, with everything that's going on, I, I read a post. Uh, I think, uh, uh, Chandra, you posted it and, it. and it was a summarization of the whole year to the moment, of the, to, this, to this point. And, and there were so many small little things that have happened each month, each week, each day. The Lord is trying to get our attention. Uh, I, I don't know when he's coming, but I do know it's sooner than later. I do know that we don't have as much time as we used to. And he's pushing and pressing upon us to do our part to be in compliance to his person to his place to his power and to his culture so that we might be clear ambassadors of who he is but watch this the whole power of us to operate in, um, in those four things or operating in the gospel is so that we can do something that nobody else can now let's get over here to, uh, to verse well, I'm going to keep going because I don't want to miss this. 13 and 14 says, for whether we be tied ourselves, it is to God. Or whether we be sober, it is for your cause. In other words, we're doing this. We're trying to walk this out so that you can, uh, so you can walk this out the same way that we're walking it out. 14, for the love of Christ constrains us because we thus judge that if one died for all, then all, then we are all dead. Watch this. We are, when the word, when he uses the word constrained, the word constrained literally means we, we are, we are subdued or we are, we are, we are restrained. We are tied down. We are, we are, Christ is holding us down. <laughs> Christ is holding, he, he's, he's holding me. 
When, 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 when everything seems like it's falling apart, when, when it seems like the seams are coming apart, Christ constrains us. He, he holds us together. Understanding this, he constrains us. For the love of Christ constrains us. Watch this. And his love is not just the love that he bestows or imposes or gives to us, but it is also the love that we have to also show. Watch this. Everything that he does to us or he gives to us is, a, is him modeling what he wants us to do. You know, when you're talking to a baby, what do you do? You say the word to them because you want them to what? You want them to repeat it. Thank you. Th- thank you. This is not thank you. I'm not thank you. What are we saying? We're trying to get a call and response, right? The idea is that I want you to model what you're seeing, right? So, so he's saying that the love of Christ constrains us. What's this? The love of Christ, which is holding me down because he's saturating me with it, is the very same thing that I have to show to others or else all this is lost. Now, look at the power of what he speaks over here. He says, and he that died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. In other words, that you are no longer your own, that you're bought with a price, that what he's done for us is so that we can do for others. So that it no longer becomes about... Come on, say it's not about me. It's not about us. It's not about us. It's not about me. It's not about us. It's about, it's, about, it's about Yahweh. It's about Jesus. It's about the Lord and King. It's about the one who was and is and is to come. It's about the one who reigns. And his reigning is not something that, um, that is him lording or, or uh, uh, imposing his will and his authority over us. It's a king who is, it's a king who should be uh, 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 the people's king, the people's choice. He, he's the king who's the people's choice. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm reminded of, a, of, a, of a Dwayne, uh, the Rock Johnson, b- before he went totally Hollywood on us. Uh, there was a time uh, back when he had that, that little patch of hair on top before it all left him. Uh, back when he used to have the turtleneck and the big gold chain. Y'all, y'all remember back when he was Rocky Malvo, uh, Malvea and, and when he was a wrestler. He, he established himself as being the people's champion. And being the people's, yeah, I'm talking about sports entertainment. I'm talking about that wrestling. Uh, being the people's uh, champion, uh, I realized that there were some things that he did that were specifically unique so that he could cater to the people. Now watch this. He was the one in the ring. He was the one fighting. But he, he became electrified when he got surrounded by the people who chose him. Now watch this. The people who hated him didn't bother him. The only ones that moved him were the ones who called out for Rocky. That they were the ones who, who prompted him to come up with the people's elbow. And Okay, all right, y'all. Yeah. I ain't got no wrestling fans here today. You know, so all right, just one. Okay, all right, just and a half. All right, one and a half. All right. So, all right, let's keep going. Watch this. <clears throat> that Christ dying for all did it so that we should no longer live for ourselves, but that we might become his, so that we can become fans of the object of our affection, so that we can be able to cry out to the one who is the champion for the people. In other words, I no longer have to fight the battle on my own. I, 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 I don't have to fight the battle anymore. All I have to do is, is reign for or, or, or lift up or magnify the champion who never lost the battle, never. who never lost the battle. Who will not fail. Isn't that what we said earlier? David describes him as the king of glory, the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Verse 16 says, therefore, I'm sorry, wherefore, henceforth know we no man after the flesh. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth we know him no more. In other words, we don't know him in flesh anymore. We know him in his person, in his place. What did he do in Acts chapter 1? He ascended back to the right hand of the Father, right? In his 
power, which is what he sent down for us to operate in, and then in his culture that we might represent him by forgiving and loving one another. The scripture says, and they will know us, what? By our love. In other words, that as we model his culture and his ways, that the world might be able to see Christ in us, the hope of glory. Now let's get to this last part. 17 through 21 is the power that he's giving us to operate in. Oh, sorry, is the mission that he's giving us to do and to fulfill with the power he's given us to operate in. Does that make sense? The mission he's given us to do with the power he's given us to operate in. Okay? Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Whew. Now, uh, you know, uh, I, have, I have been, <clears throat> I've been having talks and conversations. Uh, as a matter of fact, I was, I was even part of a, uh, part of a, uh, a panel uh, on race talks, on race relation talks. And um, th there, was a, there was a word that, that was being used, that, that, and the word is reconciliation. And, and so I was listening to one, some, uh, one young man, and he was saying, you know, we can't have reconciliation because the idea of reconciliation implies that first we were reconciled or that we were one that we were seen as peers. And so to try to reconcile the races means that first we would have had to have been one in the beginning and I'm sitting there and, 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 and I listened to his argument and then, and, and I promise you, just as we were reading, uh, as, as I was going through uh, uh, this on today, and when I saw this, I, I realized that, that the, uh, the, the, the argument that he made, even though sounded like it was founded properly. It's founded on a partial conversation. Whew. Have you ever walked in on a partial conversation? <laughs> yeah, you ever walked in on somebody talk about the game, uh, the game last night? And uh, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, I saw the, the, oh, well, I, let me, I'm sorry, because uh, ain't been no games in months. So we ain't seen nothing, we ain't seen nothing. Folks over there going through withdrawal, hoping that the NFL re, re, find a way to, to do something that we ain't talking about Madden, uh, virtual. Uh, <laughs> I, I realize that, that if you've ever walked in on a partial conversation, that sometimes uh, we, what we hear is the part that we can associate with. And then we, we, we fill in the blanks with the things that we know, not the things that we don't know. We don't do the research. We often fill in the blanks with the parts that we do know, and then we go on with with our, with our patchwork Frankenstein conversation in our mind, right? So, so you, you take the portions that you know and then you add it to it or the stuff that you heard and you smack that in there and you stir it all around in the pot and then here goes your truth. <laughs> and I realized that, that his, his idea of uh, reconciliation was based on a partial conversation. And the reason I say that is because uh, when I read this now, Paul expresses something totally different that the Lord established that I had totally neglected, that I did not see. Let's look in the scripture. The assignment that we've been given for ministry so that we can be able to fulfill what the Lord's will is in this season because he gave us the, the person or our identity, the, the place, which is his kingdom reigning in us, the power to do this, and his culture or the way that we should model doing this. <clears throat> look at it. It says, and all things, verse 18 again, and all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself. Stop right there. And all things are what? All things are what? Of God. All things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. All things are of God. Watch this. So if everything belongs to God, if everything is his, if, he is the, if he's the, the author and the finisher of all things, the next part says, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. He made everything and he's gathering all his toys back up. He's gathering all his kids back up. He's gathering all his possessions back up. Uh, when when uh, we would go to, to uh, my cousin's house or we would go to uh, uh, my, my mom's, uh, she had a friend uh, in New York. My, as a matter of fact, I think she's watching right now. Aunt Sue, we go to Aunt Sue's house and stuff. We go and we bring our toys and 
stuff. And then when it was time to leave or time to go, we, we, we would always leave stuff. We always leave stuff over there and it seemed like they leave stuff at our house. And mom would always say, hey, don't forget to get your stuff because you're going to be looking for it later. It wasn't that we didn't trust where it was. It's the fact that you're going to be looking for it later and then you're going to want to know where it is. And I'm not driving back out to New Rochelle to get it. <laughs> get your stuff, right? So watch this. When she gave us the instruction to get our stuff, the idea is for all things that belong to me, I need to make sure that I, uh, that, that I bring the things that belong to me close so that I don't lose anything. Whew. The Lord would rather not lose one, which is why it is his desire to reconcile all things back into himself, which is why, again, like I said in Ephesians chapter one, it is the will of the father to unify all things in heaven and earth together unto his dear son, which is Christ Jesus, right? If it is his will, then to gather all his stuff together, to gather everything that belongs to him. And he's doing it through Christ. We've been reconciled through by uh, who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and have given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Watch this. He's gathering us and he's given us the ability or the ministry, the authority to help him gather his stuff. Now, watch this. It's one thing for mama to say, go get your stuff. It's something else to say, Seth, Zoe, uh, Jacoby, uh, uh, Casey, go help them, go gather everything and bring it down inside. Now, everyone has been given the same mission. Even though we all are connected, we all have now intentionally looking to return or to bring or to gather in everything that belongs to the one who has empowered us. Which means now all of us have been given the same assignment to reconcile unto God what belongs to him. So when I look at it, it's not so much that the, the, yes, reconciliation is necessary for right now, but it's not reconciliation based on the way that people are trying to define it on this partial conversation. It is reconciling, it's, it's not reconciling races to races. The idea is reconciling everybody to God. Oh my gosh. That God is the common denominator. Men not the common denominator. Here's where reconciliation can't happen here because we were never connected with each other. We were all specifically supposed to be connected unto, God. unto God. Here's why, again, personal relationship is absolutely necessary because when your vertical is together, then your horizontal can, can work. Because when your vertical is in line, everything else happens. It, 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 uh, it gets gathered easier. Next verse. Watch this. To wit that God was in Christ, reconciled the word unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. He's gathering folks, even though he knows, even though he knows that, that their, their foolishness, that their folly, that their ignorance, that their trespasses, watch this, because the trespass is them taking the position of his person, of his place, of his authority or his power, and his culture. Or else again, he wouldn't say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So what he's saying is, for everyone who was operating as their own kings, listen, I know that they, they, had, they didn't know any better, but I, I, it is still my desire to gather them. So I'm still extending an invitation. It is still my desire. It, it is my will that they be gathered in. I know what they're doing right now, but I don't care. I'm still making plans for them to be added back to the body. Whew. I'm still making plans for them to be gathered back on in. Watch this. Not imputing their trespasses unto them. And I've committed unto us the word of reconciliation. It is our assignment now to speak the word of unity and of oneness. And watch this. Again, the unity and oneness isn't just so much, uh, you know, uh, um, us walking arm in arm, speaking, singing, we shall overcome or kumbaya. It is for us to make sure that we are, that we are uh, establishing the, the, the will of the Father so that we help people to connect with him. Watch this. Unity between the races becomes easy when everybody else can focus on him and not on what they see. Oh, my God. I, I, I think that sometimes people get so focused on what's in front of them that they, that they don't see what's on the inside. Scripture says men look on the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. Is that not right? Then, then is that not also where the, 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 the schism of, of the division between the groups comes from? Looking on the outward appearance? Is that, now watch this. Is that not also something that is specifically not designed by the Lord? If you look at this right here, it is the Lord's desire to gather everything that belongs to him and bring it all together. That we operate as one, as he is one. Isn't that what Jesus' prayer over us was? 
and, and clearly the only one who benefits or who desires the separation and the division is who? Is the enemy, right? It's Lucifer. So here's where we need to trace the, the, the strings and, and not get focused or get mad at who's in front of us because they call us out of their name or because they mad at us or they're trying to wave a flag or they're trying to do certain things. Here's where you can't be moved by the actions of a foolish group of individuals. But, but what the power really requires is for us to grow in an understanding and knowing what he's calling us to do so that, when we are, so that when we see what's in front of us, we're not moved by what we see in front of us, but we're moved by what he says and what he sees. And so that when we do it, we're not imputing their trespasses unto them. We're not moved by, oh, by, by what, they, what they did or what they call us or how they acted, but we're much more, fu- okay, I see what you're doing. And, and so I can't even be mad at you because it's not you. I follow the strings. I see who's really operating. The strings say that's, that's Lucifer trying to cause division. Here, watch this. It's really a sin thing. It, it, this, this is really a sin thing. It's not a race thing. It's not a division. It, it's a sin thing. And the enemy would love for us to operate in the foolishness of that area where the, the Lord has given us the power of the word of the reconciliation or the ministry of reconciliation. And again, the reconciliation isn't so much to gather each other, to be with each other. It's to gather each other unto the Lord so that, at, so that the Lord can make this work together. Whew. Twenty. Now, then, we are ambassadors for Christ. Let me stop right there on the first line. We are ambassadors. An ambassador can only be an ambassador if they first are compliant to the first four things that we talked about. They have to define uh, the person to whom they serve, which is who? The king, right? They have to also define the place that they're representing. What is that? The, the kingdom, right? They then operate in the power of the one who sent them. That is the what? The authority, right? And then when they show up, they show up representing the culture of the group that they're representing. Whenever you see an ambassador or an embassy uh, in another nation, the idea is that when you go in the embassy or when you go and you see that ambassador, that ambassador is a reflection or a small snapshot of the image, the culture, and the ways of the people that they're representing. This is his desire for us to be kingdom ambassadors. So that when he says that now, now that we are ambassadors for Christ, we choose to allow him to be Lord. We choose to represent his kingdom and that his kingdom or he is enthroned in our hearts, that we operate in his power, not our own. Because his power makes it so you can deal with foolishness because your power wants to fight somebody. His power lets you say, God bless you when they cut you off on 285. Your power say, chase up, follow them, t- put your camera on, record their license plate. Like, what you going to do? His culture says, forgive as you've been forgiven. Your culture says, you got one more time. You, you got one time. You, you on my negative, negative nerve, the reserve nerve that nobody knew I had, you on it right now. Being ambassadors of Christ, for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. Watch this. You can't offer the ministry of reconciliation if you first don't operate in it. You can't give what you don't got. You can't take nobody someplace you haven't been. You can't share about what you have not first tasted. End with 21. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. 
it is the Lord's will, it is the Lord's desire that we might be unto him, that we might be for him, that we might be for him, uh, what he's calling for us to be so that we can continue to represent him. And watch this, the prayer that, that Paul is praying over the church in Corinth specifically is so that we can understand that, watch this, he became sin or he was made sin for us who knew no sin. That we might be made righteous, the, the righteousness of God in him so that our righteousness or that our character, that our position might be so that he might get the glory. No, you need to stay awake. Stay with me now. For he hath made him to be our, he, he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made right, the righteousness of God in him, reconciliation begins when we understand that we are, we've been forgiven, that mercy has been extended, that we are not our own, we've been bought with a price. But when we operate in what the gospel requires, understanding who his person is, because when we define his person, that defines our identity. When we define his lordship, then that defines our identity, who we are in him. Then when we speak of his kingdom, we're talking about the one who reigns and then his culture and his ways. That when we talk about the place that he reigns, it's not just in heaven, but that he reigns in earth as it is in heaven. That we might operate in the power that he's given us to move uh, watch this. And the power that he's given us is not for us just to, uh, uh, to, to, to see the, the sick be healed and the dead be raised. But it's also for us to understand the power of what he's saying right here. Reconciliation. And the reconciliation isn't always just going to be with each other. We, we, watch this. You can't make everybody love everybody. But what you can do is show people how to love the Lord. You can show people what the love of the Lord looks like. And then when you give it, it changes people. It changes people. You can't change people, but he can. You can't do it, but he can. If you don't know Christ as your personal savior, here is where this begins. Here's where this starts. Here is how you get the opportunity to operate in the ministry of reconciliation and that you don't share a partial conversation any, lo any longer, but rather that you operate in the power, the clarity of who he's called us to be so that his glory might be fulfilled in us and that his will might be established in earth and in heaven. If you don't know him as your personal savior, won't you pray this prayer with me? What this does is this establishes the opportunity for the Lord to reign in you. Here's how you sign up to be an ambassador. Won't you pray this prayer? Say, Lord, today I choose you, not me, not my will, not my way. I choose you. Be my Lord, be my savior, be my king. I surrender to you so that you might get out of me everything that you require and you desire. I don't want to hold anything back for you. Get your glory. And we'll be kept to give you the praise. I pray right now, Father, that for everyone who prayed that prayer, Lord, that you'll allow them, first of all, to hear your voice in this season, God. There's so many voices. The enemy would love to distract, to destroy. But I pray that right now that they hear nothing but you, Lord. Make it so that their ears are beginning to hear you clearly in the word when they read it, God. Make it so that they can hear your voice when they hear messages being preached. Make it so that they can hear you in creation. Make it so that they can hear you when people uh, uh, give words of life and inspiration. Make it so that, they are, that they're, they're beginning to understand and to feel your breath, God. to know how intentional and how intense your love is for them so that they can also not in turn love others. I pray a hedge of protection over everyone who prayed that prayer right now, Lord, because the enemy would love for them to regret what they just did, to take back what they spoke. But I pray that those words are not canceled. Angels in heaven right now rejoicing over the prayers that they prayed. And right now we celebrate with them because we know that, Lord, right now the kingdom of heaven has just been expanded. And that you now reign in areas and in places that always belong to you, that you've desired to be in. Get your glory, Lord. 
Let your joy be their strength to keep going. And we'll be careful to give you the praise and the honor and the glory. Amen and amen. Great day, everyone. We want to give our announcements for this coming week. First and foremost, today we want to say a very happy birthday to Brother Bernard Mapp Sr. Amen. 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 Also coming up on Tuesday, our morning prayer at 11 a.m., our Bible study at 7 o'clock p.m. Uh, via conference call as well as on Facebook Live. On Wednesday, we want to say happy birthday to Sister Tracy Ruffin. Amen. On Thursday night, amen. Thursday night, book talk with Pastor Vince at 7.15 p.m. on Facebook Live. Also on Friday, Five Minute Fridays with Pastor Vince at 5.30 p.m. right here on Facebook Live. Coming up on Saturday night, Saturday night sound check at 8.30 p.m. on Facebook Live and Instagram. And then on next Sunday, we'll see you back here uh, for worship. We saw our fourth Sunday, our Feed the Homeless Sunday. So our worship service at 10.30 a.m. We'll see you here again um, at Facebook Live. And also on next Sunday, uh, happy second birthday to Bishop Johnson. Amen. So again, as you direct your attention to our um, announcements, also please remember how you can give. Also, just a reminder for our cash um, app users as well to make sure that you do use your legal name when you're uh, giving your tithes and your offering for your uh, for your seed sowing. Amen. At this time, we'll put it back into the hands of Pastor Gore. Praise the Lord. Did you grab what you needed out of the word of the Lord on this morning? I hope you did. I hope you took some notes. And I hope you plan to review those notes. Guess what? You can always replay this video for those that are watching by replay. God bless you at this time. If you have not, take a little time and make sure that you are sowing a seed into this house. Uh, tithing and offering. Uh, God has called us to do so. And so we do that digitally. digitally. Amen. Uh, you heard the announcements. Uh, you want to make sure that you are tuning in this week connecting this week we have bible study on tuesday on thursday pastor is doing book talk uh this week they're doing a winning in the mind with apostle lewis jones on thursday so you want to make sure you tune in to that on this thursday amen come on uh if all hearts and minds are clear come on stand right where you are and lift your hands we're going to prepare to uh, dismiss us. Father, we bless you. We exalt you. We give you honor, glory, and praise. We pray, God, that the word that has gone forth on today, God, will be seed sown in a fertile place of our heart, God, that it may grow thereby, that no matter what we see, no matter what it looks like, no matter what it feels like, and those things that we are surrounded with, let us remember that your word is truth and your word is is life that you have given us everything that pertains to life and godliness as we go forth this week let our ears be open our eyes be attentive that we uh, lean on to you this week that it not be our own understanding that it not be the understanding of the newscasters of the doctors god but give us wisdom as we operate in this season keep us covered under your blood watch over us stand by us and be with us in jesus name we pray amen until next time, you have a great week, and remember to operate in the ministry of reconciliation. <laughs>